mapping mental health services to encourage people to seek help without telling others until they are ready to do so. So we welcome Andy um, and we look forward to your presentation. <laughs> Hi, um, good day, good morning. <laughs> good morning in your case, Carol, and good afternoon <laughs> in other parts of the world. So anyway, let me just share my screen. Okay. Let me just help you with that, and then I will disappear. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Hmm. I'm having a problem with my computer. to it all right thank you um yep okay so again i'm i'm going to be sharing about um exp our my project is part of uh um my master's in geomatics engineering or geoinformatics um i'm actually i've actually um been part of the same college with ben hoor the pres the presenter earlier anyway this um my our project actually is is on sound maps so exploring sound maps using osm data and um free and open source software through manila manila loud so we pronounce it as manila loud so manila and loud to show uh, metro manila soundscapes and um this uh we also used participatory data collection to get the soundscapes or to get submissions from others on these soundscapes. But um, I, um, ha I'm not sure if a lot of people have already heard about soundscapes or sound maps, but it's if you can hear <laughs> the sound, it's it's probably somehow connected to the marauders map because when you hear a sound it you somehow relate it to a map or a place but um really a soundscape's definition is um maps of course with sound but um as with sound maps it's associating landmarks and soundscapes and sound when understood as an environment it's called a soundscape. So, um, actually, if I first heard about soundscapes, and when I researched also, um, it's um, uh, one of the first sound maps created were on cities and memory, or utopia. Um, if you could see here, the map um, is divided into a lot of um, points, and then there are points in the map that are connected to sounds, and when played, you can somehow um, get a feel of that point. Um, this utopian map is uh, a fictional map, of course, but um, if one hears or one listens to the corresponding uh, sounds on the map, you can get a feel or um, somehow get a vision of what you can see once you go there on that particular point in the map. So let me just share here. So it's part of the map. So it's part C3 of the utopian map. So if you play this, you can hear this sound. So um, looking at the part of the map, um, this point in Utopia 
in the utopian map is near a meadow and near um uh a, a, pa a parish i think and um with houses at, at the back so you can hear um children playing uh, a dog barking um stuff like that but anyway with our um with the traditional what what led us to to decide to make uh, the soundscapes or sound maps is because we wanted to explore new ways of mapping or new new um, new ways of showing um, information. So with sound, so, so we thought, why, why not um, make a map on sound? So with traditional um, the maps, with traditional maps, the maps are static and two dimensional re rendering of reality. But with sound map. It's capable of describing through sound the inseparability of space and time and the social and emotional aspects within these dimensions linked to the experiences of everyday life. So this is um, how our map looked like. It's a web map and then um, we can toggle between day and night mode. So the, the soundscape submitted during the day or seen, of course, during the night mode, at uh, the day mode, and then during the night, only two <laughs> soundscapes were submitted because um, we we did this during the COVID nineteen pandemic, so there were lockdowns, and not a lot of people were able to go out and record sounds. So yeah, so this is an interactive map that aims to help under understand how people interpret sounds around them and the noise in their local area through the soundscapes. It's also, we also wanted to help shape local noise policies and plans. So if someone can tell that the sound in this particular area is, uh, uh, the soundscape in this particular area is um, not pleasant or it's too noisy over this area, they could um, help um, in shaping po policies or plans in, the, in, the, in their areas. And also, as I mentioned earlier, we did this during the COVID-19 pandemic. So we wanted to enable users to explore different areas in Metro Manila and somehow get the feeling of being there in that particular place despite the lockdowns and isolation caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. So um, through the descriptions, because people are also asked to describe the sound or the place when they, when they submit their uh, soundscapes. So um, through these semantic descriptions of the uploader, the soundscape attached to the, to the location in a photo related to the location can somehow make uh, or enable users to explore these areas as well, aside from the, vis the visuals, but the with the audio as well. Yep, so uh, we asked um, users to to uh, send recordings related to the location. Um, aside from that, it's we we wanted them to submit uh, the photo uh, related to the location and the feedback on their perceived levels level of valence or how they how they thought about the sound. If they it was annoying, if it was um, okay, or the sound there is pleasant. So um, um, and then we the focus of the map is in Metro Manila, Philippines. So possible we also suggested possible soundscapes to be submitted so um areas such as the train stations in the philippines or near bridges or landmarks or parks or uh, rivers um or schools yeah so most of the possible so uh, soundscapes we wanted to um have or we wanted to map were these ones and when adding um, we had we have just a plus button at the left corner left side corner of the map at the bottom and then people can send their uh, soundscapes through a Google form so we utilized Google form for people to submit but since it's via Google form we also needed the coordinates of the place right so we provided um, uh, these these instructions, but also we added tools in the map so people can get their the exact location and the, the coordinates of the soundscapes when once before they submitted. 
So for example, if you're in a in a park and if I'm in a park right now and I want to and I want to send a so- soundscape, but I also I have to get the location or the coordinates of my location right now. So anyone can just uh I can just click on the um hand button on the map and then it will automatic automatically zoom in on my location and then I can use the this other tool on the map so that um I could get the URL of my location and this and this URL contains the latitude and longitude of my location and then I can um paste this on the Google form and then attach I can then attach my recording and then the photo of the soundscape related to it yeah and uh, um, as i've said um the sub, the um users are asked to um provide a short description and then what part of the day it, it was recorded and then um for the perceived lo- level of annoyance because we wanted people to rate how how they how they perceive um this uh how they perceive uh, the sound level in the place is. So, or we wanted to know their level of interest in the place. So, low valence, it means the um, valence, it means the effective quality referring to the intric- intrinsic attractiveness or goodness or positive valence for them, whether they like the sound around the, around the soundscape or negative valence, whether they thought it was bad or they didn't like um, having that type of um, noise in that soundscape. So that could be from negative five to five. And then the level of interest. So we plotted the, these um, with valence and interest. So there, there, uh, there will be uh, places or soundscapes with uh, none or no level of annoyance, with slight or moderate annoyance or high uh, level of annoyance. Um, also, for those who do not want to submit soundscapes but want to help us um, determine the level of PLA or perceived level of annoyance in that place, people can just listen to the soundscapes in the map and then um, and then provide their rating on the uh, PLAs for the soundscapes submitted on the map, and then. Um, the, we also use Google uh, Google Forms through this. If uh, if I want to provide my level of interest on the mapped soundscapes, um, I could just choose because uh, once you click on the drop down here, um, the, uh, all the soundscapes li- are listed, and then I could just provide a positive or negative um, interest on the soundscape, and then rate if it's positive, one to five, and if it's negative, negative one to zero yep and then so here are the results um i uploaded a copy of the slide so you could check also the links here so here are the results we just got around 40 submissions and then um uh, people can also filter the results which ones have um no, no level of annoyance high level of annoyance and there is also a map view here where people can check. So we use Tableau Public for this and map box for the base map. And the libraries used, how did, how did I make the web map? Uh, I used a leaflet, Mapbox Studio, and jQuery. And then also, we also posted this. I, I posted the, the free the map um, on GitHub pages, and then the plots on Tableau Public. So the for the web map, uh, the base map, as, as I've said earlier, is map box. It, it's to ensure that when soundscapes are mapped, their corresponding locations submitted by the users are correct. And we also use a search tool, which uses your nominate them to search OSM data on the map. So people can just uh, search on a particular map. If, whether, for example, if they forgot to get the coordinates when they were there when they recorded the soundscape, 
Philippines, they can still search um, for the location and then get the URL of the location or, or the coordinates of the map um, through the search tool. And then for uh, a used leaflet to build the web map, and then these are the tools I've added. So zoom controls, um, location share control, that's the one I used to get the URL of the location for the coordinates. And then control locate, that's um, to enable zooming in to the location of the user, but you, the, um, but the user is first asked to allow um, them to track their location, the app to track their location. And then you search for the nominate them search tool and then toggle sidebar so that um, we could separate the mapped um, soundscapes during the day and during the night. So here. Um, here are the map tools um, in the used when I used leaflet here. And then the crowdsourcing mechanism, of course, as I've said, Google Form, but we also um, had to provide um, uh, rules or uh, instructions on what to upload or how to, or the, the dimensions and the format of the recordings and the photos. So why did we do that? It's because the database structure follows um, these uh, rules. So for the ID, you wanted the to have the the file name of the sound and photo in camel case, and then with just the same. If if I'm submitting a sound file for this place, the camel case um, uh, file name should be also the same as the photo. But uh, of course, the sound file which should be in .mp3 with the same file name, and then the photo would be uh, in .jpg with the same file name. And then the recommended dimensions is 600 by 400 um, pixels. And for the label, we also asked um, uh, users to follow a format, but that this is not strict. So we, but so since we could just um, um, edit it or revise it when we put in the data and the code, and then for the location share, yeah, we use that with when um, when the submitters use the the Google uh, the link for their coordinates, and then we just get the the lat latitude and longitude in that URL. Yep, and those are both in decimal numbers, and then yeah, the time also is strictly um, in the code as well as the author. So yeah, here's a sample of what you could see in the JSON file. The difficult part here is um, manually adding the submissions from Google, from Google Forms to the JSON file in GitHub because um, we we had to follow the, the format or else um, th there could be an error when, when loading the web map. And then here um, we save the submissions, the photos and sounds in the assets folder in GitHub. Um, as you can see here, the the file names are in camel case and this and, and the file names are also the same for the JPG and MP3 files. Yeah, so we also since it was a pandemic, we received um, very very few submissions, but when but when we had time to also collect the sound soundscapes, we we used an app for a sound meter um, recording. So um, we also for those that we were able to get um, the decibel reading at the time of the sound recording, um, we we were also able to get a map showing the average sound meter readings interpolated using inverse distance weighted or IDW interpo interpolation technique. But yeah, due to a limited number of sound level measures, the raster is queued to have higher values in areas where there are data measurements. 
Um, so that's uh, the orange to red parts. Well, those showing low values in areas where there, there are no data measurements for blue to yellow. So 29 out of 40 submissions had decibel reading at the time of sound recording. And the range was around 56 to 80 decibels. And um, for the results, the minimum sound level was measured in um, a near uh, private subdivision street. Of course, it was very quiet in there and there were a lot of trees. But the as expected, um, those with the maximum sound levels are um, around a, an avenue with uh, heavy traffic. So um, I'll show you the the map okay let me just it seems we might have lost andy she might have just removed herself from the uh, studio um but i'll try and get her back Thanks. Sorry, um, I think I. That's all right. Welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Can I just share my. Yeah. I'll just wait for you to share your screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you view this? Yep, okay, sorry, I lost the connection. Um, anyway, so this is the site. So if I click on, yeah, if I click on a, a point here in the map, it can, the photo will show and then it will play, the soundscape will play. This one, this was, this was recorded in December, so there was a, a Christmas song playing in the background. Yeah, and just to show, yeah, yeah you can you can check here. Um, th this is the plus button to add the add data or submit data. Yeah, so that's it. Um, you can just ch further check on the this. Um, our project is in GitHub. It's publicly shared in there. So um, Manila, thank you. Thanks so much, Andy. Um, that was a really great presentation. Um, Again, I am in awe. <laughs> I'm a bit fumble, like I'm a bit. Um, but anyways, we do have a question, which is exciting when you have questions. Um, if you're ready. So it's basically just asking about the data collection method, um, especially with entering locations and sounds. Did you implement any validations and checks? Um. Yeah, actually, for the locations, we uh, we since the, we we require submissions with for for the locations via that URL I mentioned earlier. We were able to validate the the points and the via OSM. So we just had we just had to search for the latitude and longitude provided, and then yeah. And there are also photos um, attached to the submission, so it was easier to identify or to, to validate. Yeah, that makes things easy. 
<laughs> um, the next question, what was jQuery used for? Um, building the side panel. <laughs> Um, I, I forgot. <laughs> it's okay. It's like it, 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 this last year. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> probably building the, um, yeah, and querying um, the, from the JSON file into the web map. Uh, okay. Um, are there, well, maybe I'll ask this one for myself. Um, are there any plans to continue the project? Um, I know the COVID pandemic hindered your data collection. Yeah, I hope I, I wanted to continue this because it it's it's a great way to get a feeling of a place to connect mm -hmm. to a place with the sound. So I really wanted to do so. Yeah, but COVID happened. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, it's great that you. To be honest, I've never seen ideas like this being implemented, um, you know, even locally here. Um, so it's really great to see your work and even Ben's work and even Russell's work prior to this and see what you guys are doing for your communities. Um, I have no further questions. I think everybody is awestruck <laughs> as well. Actually, um, um, in, the, in my presentation, I added some, uh, some uh, slides there that have uh, samples and other projects related to soundscapes and the links on how you can listen to the soundscapes in there. There are a lot of uh, actually great projects before on soundscapes. So, can you, so you can check the presentation in my description. Okay, we'll definitely probably do that. Um, thanks so much, Andy, for your time and your presentation and your enthusiasm to present. Hopefully we'll see you at the next conference and I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you, bye. Good night. Right, so that concludes our three sessions for today. Um, I thank you for joining the session this afternoon or this morning for me. Um, I hope you all had fun. I am in all of the work that's being done by these three uh, great capable uh, presenters. Um, and I hope you've been able to take away something from the session. I invite you to the Milena, Milena Lipman room for the next session. And I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon and enjoy the next coming days here at Phosphogy. Take care.